What's going on, everybody? It's Davey from the 80s, and you're now entering the Cinema Chop Shop, so park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you see a Patreon account, you click, you become a member. All you got to do is try, recommend movies and music and trailers for me to react to, so click the link. Now, with that being said, we're here today to review The Northman. This is, um, what's his name, Robert Eggers' new movie. Uh, he, produ- he directed The Witch and The Northman, and he's back at it again with... Uh, I said the North man. He, this is the movie I'm reviewing. He did the witch, the lighthouse, and now he did the North man. So we're here today to review it. Uh, we have Alexander Skarsgård, who the first time I remember seeing him was in straw dogs, but he's probably more known for doing like King Kong versus Godzilla. Then you have Anya Taylor joy, who I remember from Morgan, but she was also in the witch. Um, you have uh, who else? Nicole Kidman is the queen in the movie. And then you have William Dafoe who's the jester. And Ethan Hawke, who's the dad. Now, everybody in this movie does a freaking phenomenal job. I'm just going to get that out of the way right now. This, I know recently I did a video talking about how this movie flopped. And yeah, it's true. This movie did really flop horribly. But I am here to also tell you that this movie does not deserve to be flopped, right? This movie does not deserve to be a flop. Why it happened, I don't know. But to be honest with you, this movie is freaking phenomenal. Everything from this movie is really, really good. I think I only have one gripe with that mo- with this movie, and it's something so minuscule and small that it's like it could be overlooked. Uh, I'll get into that later. But the central plot of this movie is that there's a young, there's a king returns home from war, uh, and he's betrayed by his brother, and eventually and, and is killed. And his son is basically responsible for uh, seeking his revenge, right? His, his revenge, he's going to go back, kill the man that killed his father, and then also, you know, claim the throne that's rightfully his, right? This is like some straight up Lion King shit. We've seen this storyline, this idea, this plot kind of played out over time in history. So it wasn't anything new in that regard, but it was really cool how they kind of like, they, I, I don't know, but... 100%, but I know that they stayed true to most of the Viking mythos and the Norse mythology of Odin and, you know, these different gods that they refer to, Valkyries and Valhalla and shit. I know they refer to it a lot in this movie, and I, I know that that's kind of in realm with what Norse mythology is. So it was really cool to see it. It kind of reminds you in certain aspects of like 300 minus the little dark glossiness. Uh, I mean, visually, like it reminds you of 300 minus the the dark glossiness. The visuals in this movie are freaking phenomenal, bro. I'm gonna just go ahead and say that shit. You know, like the camera angles and the large landscape uh, shots that they do. Wide shots, amazing, dude, amazing. Everybody in this freaking movie brings it. (laughs) I gotta shout out my boy, William Dafoe. William Dafoe kills every role that he's in. He's like this freaking maniacal, like crazy jester uh, who's also kind of like responsible for like uh, rituals, I guess. And it's just, there's just this scene where it's like, it's just looking, you're looking at his face and he's just talking. And that alone just kind of like rivets you. This is a very long, 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 long movie, which is a slow burn. It's like over two hours long. And it's a slow burn. So if those aren't your type of movies, then you might be bored watching this movie. I can't say that enough. Like, I I feel like a lot of movies get a lot of flack because people don't have the attention span or the willpower to deal with a two-hour film. Although a lot of new films coming out are two hours long. And I would like to kind of give nod to Infinity Wars and the Marvel franchise because I feel like those movies prove that people are willing to sit in a movie theater for over two hours long. And because of that, you see movies kind of expanding their runtime. And I really am going to say that a a big reason why studios are doing it is because they see Marvel had so much success doing it that they felt the confidence in order to do it. But this movie, regardless of all that, would have been two hours anyway, because this is an A24 product, you know, and A24, like, is synonymous with, like, RT films, but also is synonymous with the idea that they are hit or miss. They are hit or miss. A24 does not always hit on the mark with their movies, you know, and I love A24 as a freaking company and I see almost every single project that they drop, but I am, I'm I'm an honest person and I will definitely say that everything that 
A24 drops is not gold. It never, it's never going to be gold. You know, it just, it's beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So in my opinion, they're not all great films, you know, but this, this is an exception. You know, I wasn't a huge fan of the witch lighthouse was good. I liked that movie, but at the same time, it's not something that I'm going to run and watch, but this movie, the Northman, I will say it right now with all the confidence in my heart that this is this generation's uh, gladiator. This is this generation's Braveheart because it's just that kind of fucking movie, you know? And everybody in this movie does a freaking phenomenal job from beginning to end. The, the I didn't get bored watching this movie. The visuals in this movie, there's like a very riveting scene where uh, blood is used symbolically and then it kind of like pans to like a CGI scene with like a representation of a family tree. You don't know what I'm talking about when you see it. But that scene like captivated me and I was just really just stuck on this movie. Like there was several times where I had to lean forward and I was just so glued to this movie. It had my attention all the way through. And that's a hard task to do for long for slow burn movies is to make you feel as if the runtime is irrelevant. You know, like I, I, there's been plenty of times where I watch movies and it feels like a fucking two hour long movie. It feels like you can feel it. Like, you know, you're just kind of like clock watching. You're kind of like trying to guess what's going on next. This movie I just enjoyed and just sat through and cruised through the whole thing. This is easily a, a, a movie, like hands down, I'm not even gonna bullshit with you guys. This is one of the best movies that came out this year by far. And I'm gonna say this too, because I'm gonna say it with my chest. The real shit is that this year, I feel like it's been like a lackluster year for film. I feel like it's been a dry ass year for film, like straight up. And this, and I feel like a lot of movies has received a lot of leeway from me. And I'm gonna be honest about it because this year has been whack. So it's like, oh, for a 2022 film, I guess this movie's all right. But let that have been a movie, a year where there was fire ass movies coming out. I probably would have said that movie fucking sucked. It was trash, it was basura. It should be bodied, right? So a lot of movies have gotten a lot of grace and leeway from me because, you know, it's been a trash ass year. So it was like, okay, this movie entertained me. And it feels like people are losing the craft of actually crafting a good movie. Now, now we're in a whole different ballpark. Now I have somebody actually coming to the table with something very interesting, something captivating, something riveting, something that's going to get everybody's attention. And it's sad that it didn't because honestly, this movie does not deserve to be a box office flop at all, you know, and like this movie embeds with the whole, it keeps the mythology alive. And also it kind of at times, like it gives you obviously the work of fiction. Uh, it's not like a, a, a true to heart, like a uh, gladiator slash, slash Braveheart movie where you would think that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like it's, um, like it's factually based, like it's like it's based on something. Therefore, there's no like fictionary aspects to it. This movie has a lot of fictionary aspects to it, but it also reminds you that it might be from the perception of the character, which is a cool thing. There's only one scene that's not like that, but the most part of the movie is everything seems like to be like envisioned from the character's perspective. So it's like you can all honestly say that, okay, this character's tripping. And he's and he's so in tune with his uh, religious or his uh, mythology or his uh, spiritual beliefs that he sees these things, right? But they're not necessarily there. And then you have later on a line, like something happens and it's just like, it might be an act of fate. I don't know, or it might be an act. Of, well, they still kind of leave it up to skepticism, but it's pretty obvious that um, the, the blade is faded. So therefore like, you know, you'll, you'll see when I get there. I don't want to ruin anything for you. But anyway, uh, the only like I said, this movie goes well. And the soundtrack to this movie is freaking phenomenal. I just uh, I just ordered the vinyl from Sacred Bones. So shout out to them for making a freaking crazy looking vinyl. I'm definitely looking forward to playing that on my uh, my record player. Uh, this, is, this movie is just really good, dude. Every aspect of this movie is really good, except for one thing. Um, Aside from the last fight, I feel like the Skarsgård, I don't remember which Skarsgård he is, the brother Skarsgård. I, I want to say he's Alexander Skarsgård. Is he? Um, but 
Yeah, Alexander Skarsgård. Hey, I got it right. Because I'm bad with names. His fighting in certain scenes felt so timed. You know, like it felt really timed. Uh, 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 uh. It felt really time. And I feel like in movies like this, you have to make sure that it's like a fluid flow to it. Like it's not timed. It doesn't seem robotic. It doesn't feel scripted. You want it to feel like organic. Like this whole film felt really, really organic from beginning to end. So it's kind of weird that when you um when you add in these other elements of him just being like really stiff when he's fighting. It kind of took away, it took me out of the movie, kind of took away from the movie. Uh, also, there are some scenes of like gore that are rendered by CGI. And I I, I feel like they should have went the practical route, but that's just me. Um, I, I really wish that every fight scene that Alexander had would have been as fluid as the final fight scene. Because the final fight, scene, fin final fight scene is very fluid in its like from beginning to end. And when you were like the rest of the movie, you don't get that aspect from him. It's like very slow. It's very rigid. It's very like, you know, like it's, it's very mechanical. And I, I didn't like that. I wasn't really a huge fan of that. But like I said, from beginning to end, this movie is, is freaking phenomenal. Like my wife was talking and she's like, it reminds me of Zelda. And I'm like, I can kind of see what you're talking about. But she's uh, was talking about this specific scene that there's like, some what are they called like metal knuckles or something it's like the sheet of it's like the suit of armor that you wake it up in zelda and then it comes alive and when it hits you it does like tremendous damage and for those of you that seen the movie you know exactly possibly what i'm referring to when i'm talking about this but it's funny when she showed it to me i was like yo i can definitely see the correlation <laughs> between that aspect of uh legend of zelda and uh what in this movie the northman but this movie is a is a is a slow burn. It, it's in, it comes at you in chapters. It comes at you in waves. But it's a really really good damn movie. And like I said, here on the Cinema Chop Shop, we grade movies in three ways. I'm not even going to give you the fucking spill. This movie is getting spared, homie. He ain't learned of that. He ain't learned the death of my hands. God's only man, spared by the butcher. Yeah, you heard it, folks. I'm sparing the North, man. This movie does not deserve the flag that it's getting. It honestly deserves a lot more box office success than it's getting. It deserves everything, and hopefully A24 continues to believe in uh, Mr. Eggers and keeps pushing his projects because... This movie is visually stunning. It's sonically stunning. Everything about this movie is just on point and I just enjoyed it so much. So kudos to them for doing that. So that's my review. Let me know if you agree or disagree, whatever the case may be. Drop it in the comment section down below. And you are now exiting the Cinema Chop Shop. Hope you guys are having a magnificent day. Adios, homies.